Welcome to Missouri Chamber Direct. I'm Karen Bushman. With the 2015 session now complete, let's look back at some of the biggest accomplishments at the Capitol this year. First, the General Assembly has restored Missouri's caps on medical malpractice lawsuits. Already signed into law, this effort will help lower insurance premiums for health care providers, ensuring Missouri can attract and retain talented doctors. I think is our best chance of getting some certainty uh, for docs uh, and hospitals uh, uh, related to medical malpractice and being able to be insured and allowing the insurance actuaries to be able to uh, have hard numbers to deal with and, and calculate uh, premiums. Otherwise, uh, they stay out of control. Another new law will help bring data centers to our state. Senator Mike Parson sponsored this proposal, which provides tax exemptions for data center machinery, equipment, and computers. I don't think there's any question that the data center arena or that business is one of the fastest growing businesses in the United States, uh, along with here in Missouri also. Many states around us are pretty aggressive about trying to get these centers, and it seems to be a pretty dynamic way to the future. What the, the data center would actually do what this legislation would do would basically it is a tax rebate sales tax rebate in order to be able to receive that you will have to pay that money into the state once you pay that money into the state you would have to meet the RIMBY model for dollar for dollar on that the Missouri Chamber supported the creation of data center incentives as a way to attract more high-tech high-wage jobs to our state also this session, Senator Will Krause succeeded in passing the law that gives companies more options during tax season. The idea originated from the Missouri Chamber's Tax Council. During a January hearing of the bill, Senator Krause explained why it is important. Really what, this, what we're trying to do is not penalize headquarters being located in the state of Missouri because what happens is the out-of-state tax in the state of Missouri would be taxed here, so we get incentives for corporations that have headquarters in Missouri to move outside of Missouri because they wouldn't be taxed on anything that's outside of Missouri if they were outside of Missouri, but their headquarters are here, so they're taxed on all of it. So this is what that single sales factor will do and benefit those businesses and help keep them here and their headquarters here. Another major accomplishment was the passage of a right-to-work bill through the legislature this year. During House floor debate, Representative Eric Bertelson explained why right-to-work status is important for Missouri. This law which allows labor unions to force members has become a boat anchor on the economies and the salaries of individuals and taken away those individuals' freedom. This vote today will give individual workers their freedom back. While right to work has passed the General Assembly, it still requires either an unlikely signature from Governor Jay Nixon or a difficult veto override attempt. During an interview earlier this session, Representative Bill Lant encouraged business leaders to help right to work become law in Missouri. And I realize that business leaders are reluctant to to uh, uh, take sides and and uh, step forward on this thing, but it's something that that I think all of us are going to be uh, positively impacted with if we can get this passed. In other news, House Bill 722 passed this session and would stop cities from creating their own employment laws. The Missouri Chamber's Tracy King helped advocate for this idea during the session and explain to a House committee why this is an important policy. So it's important to the Missouri Chamber and our members because um, without this legislation, every city in the state can impose their own regulations on employers. And that, that could be up to a thousand, I think we're up to a thousand municipalities at this point. That would not only create a nightmare of bureaucracy, but it really would undermine the ability of Missouri to be known as a business friendly state and for us to compete for jobs. So we believe it's very, very important. We also believe that the Missouri business community is already in a challenging regulatory environment. If you talk to employers, they'll say that regulations are hindering them from uh, creating jobs as well as stability and uncertainty and we believe that this legislation takes care of, of those issues. To become law, House Bill 722 still needs a signature from the governor or a veto override by the General Assembly. While there were many positive developments for pro-business supporters this year, the session did not find an answer for how to fund Missouri's transportation system. Even modest funding proposals did not have enough support to pass. 
Senator Doug Leibler was a leader in trying to solve our road funding crisis. During the Senate committee hearing, he asked his colleagues to work urgently to find a solution. So, if I'm still using a calculator right, the old-fashioned calculator, we sent $827 million to the federal government in highway taxes. So, we're at a point that we're going to have to make a decision, and we're going to have to be uh, an expedited decision because we're at a critical point right now in the funding of our highways. And it affects everybody. It affects everybody's livelihoods, it affects jobs, it affects the safety of the motoring public, and uh, we need to move forward on this bill. During the course of the session, Jefferson City was also the backdrop for several Missouri Chamber programs, such as STEM Day at the Capitol, the launch of the Missouri 2030 Project, and the kickoff of the 25th Anniversary Class of Leadership Missouri. You can find a full list of upcoming events for 2015 on our website, mochamber.com, where you can also register online. Even with the session now over, watch Missouri Chamber Direct to stay up to date throughout the year. We will cover important judicial decisions, a possible special session, and other business developments across the state. We also invite you to check out our blog for business for updates. You can find our blog on our website at mochamber.com.